So this video was supposed to be a short and 21 brake tests later over three months, I am still not convinced I know that much more. I'm gonna take you through the journey of why I decided to continue to break and break and break these because these are some pretty interesting carabiners doing some pretty interesting things. But watch the first set of brake tests to find out why I kept chasing the rabbit. This oddly shaped carabiner is a paramotor carabiner. It's the only thing holding a stoked paramotorist to their wing. And it's not redundant because they have two. It's like half dundant. Because if one goes, you're pulling on your wing weird. Imagine looking over to the side and seeing your carabiner not closed. I know I'd have to change my underwear. Now CT Shoot Flyer or Brian likes to have steel carabiners, which ironically, this one says 22 kilonewtons. And the aluminum ones that he also sent me, these are new, is rated for 30 kilonewtons. The aluminum one is stronger and it feels roughly about half the weight as the steel one. But where steel does shine is typically when it's not closed all the way, it more or less, I think, performs better. But that's what this episode's about. He was doing wingovers and spirals and that put enough force on this apparently in order to permanently bend this enough to have enough deformation in there that it won't close now at all. Let's start with the new 30 kilonewton aluminum one with the gate closed. It's that pin that broke off. As Soon as it disengages from here, then it opens up completely and then it breaks it there. Now, it didn't exactly break at 30, but super close enough. Fun fact is it did not break where the hole is. The stress is over here. So the way I'm going to set this up is I'm just going to keep that gate from closing with this sling. Seems to still function just fine. At four kilonewtons, it seems to be super good enough. Holy crap, it's still working just fine. Holy crap. Oh my god. This thing is still working. It's still, well, hot damn. Climbing carabiners say, in this case, seven when it's open, eight if cross-loaded. We did a whole cross-load video you should check out. But these ones, they only say what it's rated for if you use them right. So let's just pull it to, uh, just pull it to destruction. That's not too bad at 17.37. All right, so in this case, it did not break the gate because the gate was not being pulled on and it broke on the same side as the other carabiner. Now, I wanna know how strong this is when it's closed and if I slowly pull it like I did the last one, it's probably gonna end up doing this. So let's just pull this closed and see what happens. Holy shit, what the hell? I'm pretty sure I closed that. Look at that. That's damaged, right? That notch just isn't very big, but it does plenty good on the aluminum. So look inside of there and you can see there's lips, right? If you look inside of there, it's like missing. That thing pulled through. That's not very high. Like these didn't seem to have a problem. So you can see on this one that that blew out a little bit. You can see inside of there that it chipped it away as it pulled out from the bottom down here. What I don't see is damage on these, so I don't think this got pulled out while he was flying around. Let's just uh, open that fully and see what happens. Fun fact, Dyneema holds its shape until you massage it out. But that opened up just kind of like Play-Doh, as long as you have a big hydraulic to pull it. So you can see that it was about four kilonewtons before like deformation started to happen in here. So I wasn't quite convinced that I should Put out a video until I investigated a little bit further. And then I look in my email and this guy named Tucker Gott hit me up. I recently discovered your channel as it was reckoned to me by many of my viewers. I'll have him explain what his question was. This all started out when I purchased that $3,000 AliExpress paramotor and the carabiners that came on it, I was a little bit skeptical about. I decided to swap them out for carabiners that I knew I could trust, and you guys in the comments recommended that I send the AliExpress carabiners over to Ryan to have him actually break them and see if they would hold up to what they're rated to. So I did exactly that. So the AliExpress paramotor carabiners came with the branding Air Extreme. Air Extreme is apparently a somewhat reputable brand. However, if you look closely on those carabiners, it looks like the original branding was scratched off 
painted over, and then stamped with the Air Extreme logo, which is why I was skeptical about them. They claim to be rated to a respectable 21 kilonewtons, but if you look at that logo, it's the same deal, scraped off, painted over, and then printed 21. My buddy Dan did a little detective work. He actually did a reverse Google image search and found that the exact carbon copy of these Paramotor AliExpress Air Extreme quote unquote carabiners were available from Walmart under the branding Call for about $15. The suggested uses ranged from keychains to parachuting, and they boasted great material in the description. I was skeptical to say the least. I should fire myself for not having noticed that it has had paint on it. I didn't know this until I watched Tucker's video of our collaboration break test. You see when I started to scratch it off, that it seemed to have the similar printing and information underneath. But then after I used Goof Off to get off the initial paint, it looks like they just printed it wrong over and over and over. I think this is a good lesson in not buying life supporting gear from places like AliExpress, Wish, Walmart, or even Amazon, because there's just not the quality control that you need in order to depend your life on. If they can't stamp this correctly, did they get the right aluminum or steel poured into the big vat before they poured it into the mold before they made these things? You don't know and neither do I. I bet you they don't know. This, that notch just isn't very big and that's why it seems to be coming off. So this carabiner is never really gonna sit in the center. It's gonna pick this side or it's gonna pick this side and obviously that side's gonna be stronger. I wanna see what happens if your setup ends up on this side. That's not the full strength. Interesting how that pin came off, whatever, but it broke there. Looks like the, the notches on the inside seem to be intact. Looks like this is where it failed, was on the back side of the gate, came off the pin. So it was set up like this last time. I'm curious if this makes any difference because it's still pulling on the gate side right here. What the hell? 12.39. If you have any side of your setup pulling on the gate side, it is not going to break at 21. Once that gate opens up, there's nothing stopping this from coming apart. So the thing holding this is just this little notch right here, right? And you can see that it's sort of missing a little bit right here. So this just isn't a, a good enough notch to hold the gate side. So then we decided to test a steel beaner that was from a quality brand. Here's an Austria Alpine stainless carabiner that has the lock at the bottom. You push it in, but it opens up here. This seems to have a much bigger notch in order to hold the gate in. Good for 26, 10 open. That's way better. No idea where the other piece is. Okay, it was like this last time. Let's see what happens when we do this. Oh, that was a little lower. So a neat thing about steel is it will bend before it just snaps, even though we're breaking at still less than what it's rated for. So Brian sent me two more steel Air Extreme carabiners. In these two tests, we are gonna try to pull as best we can on the spine side and then we'll pull the same way if it works out on the gate side to see if we can actually get 22 kilonewtons. Okay, I tried to give this a fair chance and it slid to the gate side. No wonder you guys have horror stories of these things coming open. Ah, stop breaking my stuff. Not 22 kilonewtons. Now you might notice when I pull on these carabiners, it has them cockeyed and you're like, that's why they're breaking lower, which is true. But if you take a triple wrapped soft shackle here and you measure it, it is about an inch wide, which I notice some straps that are on these carabiners are only that wide. And this is really helpful to know if you are using a strap that isn't taking up the full width of the carabiner. 
but then other straps look like they are taking up the entire width and therefore they are going to be pulling on the gate side and the strong spine side more evenly. What's funny is whenever I've triple wrapped this in order to break some big carabiners that are for climbing, people say it was too wide and now it's too narrow. So I just got two more of these types of carabiners from Florian in Austria and they're Woody Valley made by Camp. They're rated for 18 kilonewtons and seven cross loaded. He says there is quite some controversy in the community about replacing carabiners. Manufacturers indicate exchange intervals of two to eight years, depending on the material of the carabiner. However, not everybody respects these intervals. So he used these from 2019 to about 2021 for about 150 flights. And we're going to find out how it breaks when it's pulled on the span set, the wide green sling I have on one side and one inch webbing on the other. That's the stress point showing the unpolished aluminum on the inside. That's pretty cool how the anodization starts to wrinkle. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or not. I guess I should have checked before I broke it. Okay, let's not get into the aluminum versus steel thing yet. We'll <laughs> just continue to break these. Dimitri from Iris Paramotors then hit me up and he was like, what about super air carabiners? I was like, why not? Let's see what happens with those ones. Oh, shoot, that is damaging that. And that is because, whoa, that is really warm. That is, that is, that is amazing. <laughs> the notch didn't break. The pin in the back did. Steel definitely reacts different. All right, let's do an open gate. So if something got pinched in there, let's see what happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be closing on me. This is supposed to be the open gate test provided with the gate open keeper. Oh, okay, 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 I'm not damaging this again. So that could be at forces you get. Oh no, I'd shit my pants if I saw this and I was in the sky. Super. Rated for 20KN. Well, let's find out if that's the case. There's the stress point on that one. Broke above MBS. It looks like the inside, I don't know. Those don't look too healthy. You can see that nose is scratched a bit when it got pulled off. But it's disengaging from here. And the second it does that, breaks on that part. So now let's test this aluminum with the gate open. That's a lot lower. Look at that. Those are fairly solid. And that's because it wasn't attached to this at all. That's what a healthy one looks like. I mean, it's not that healthy here though. So the last ones that Dimitri sent me were the sketchy Alibaba carabiners. This says Black Hawk 18KN. And that's, that's it. I mean, what else do you need to know? There's a much more positive notch. And that's from that side. The locking mechanism seems to be solid. It has a lot of play in it, but that should be fine. Kind of feels crappy to use. It feels a bit cheap. I mean, they are boasting 18KN, so, well, it did what they said it would do. The back blew out from that pin right there. Same result, the pin breaks in the back, which makes this, this part super good enough because it just comes like this until it breaks and then it just flies off. That's the mechanism inside in case you were wondering. That's all it is. Pretty fascinating unmaking carabiners. This is the longest I think I've ever chased a rabbit where I just keep ordering more stuff and breaking it. I got more air extreme carabiners here. It's rated for 22 kilonewtons, and we're gonna give it a more fair chance by pulling it with this two inch wide span set on one side and this slack line webbing on another, which is one inch. So we're not pulling just on the corner, and we're gonna find out if this notch is gonna hold this gate super good enough, and if we can actually get the 22 kilonewtons they claim. That is not 22 kilonewtons. How on earth are they getting this rating? They don't make this stuff up. 
How am I pulling it so different that I'm getting half of what they were getting? It breaks those little tiny wings on the inside. You can see on the right gate that it has those wings on it intact. And on this one, it does not. 12.90. Two for two is enough science for me to say that that's not working. Yep, you can see the little wings inside the gate are broken. So when we broke the first two of these Powerfly Austria Alpine paramotor carabiners, we did not pull on it evenly, and we tried it both ways, and we were not getting the MBS of 26 kilonewtons. These are steel, and steel is supposed to be more reliable. Now, 17 is not a bad number. It's just, I don't know, not 26. So what we're going to do now is Tucker sent us another one. We're going to put it on the two inch span set here and we're going to take this webbing which is one inch put it on the more narrow side to give it the most even pulling fighting chance we can to get to 26 kilonewtons oh no are you kidding me that's supposed to be stronger when it's in a loop but i have pulled it several times to be fair kind of looks like it's the same shape. It was taken over 20. It's working. We are getting more strength out of it. Okay, I doubled it up this time. Let's see how this does. They did it. They broke over in BS. So it looks like that pin sheared off and then the gate came off and therefore it was able to stretch and that does that matches up there. So it stretched a lot before it broke. Good job, Austria Alpine. It looks like you have a pretty good carabiner. You see in this video, how you pull it will determine how much strength you will get out of what you are connecting to. I would like to emphasize in climbing that if one of these carabiners magically broke, you're still connected and perfectly good. But you are undundant if you have two of these, one breaks and now you're hanging weird off your wing. Ooh, but we'll never hit those forces. We only hit three G. Do you really want your carabiners breaking at 3.1 G? You don't know what you don't know, and so you need some safety margin, especially when you don't have backups. Ah, now I don't think I've asked a paramotorist this, so I'll ask you guys. What do you think about having a soft shackle, because you can get these pretty tiny and they're pretty strong, and like maybe packing stuff up? The whole point of this video is because people hit me up because they're concerned about these things. Now, if you think the tests were faulty for the carabiners that broke really low, well, I broke all the ones that broke super good enough the same way. But now let's talk about steel versus aluminum because the real gear fear comes from aluminum fatigue where you get a micro fracture inside of the aluminum here where the stress usually is, where steel will take it more like a champ. You basically are not going to fatigue this whereas aluminum, there are micro fractures, I think, on this one. Because I have an entire bag of fatigued aluminum carabiners from Dimitri. And this is where I was like, stop. <laughs> this episode needs to end. We were just breaking the strength of perfectly good carabiners. But I've got a bag of perfectly not good carabiners. If you've got some fatigued aluminum carabiners, Maybe we should pull test yours as well. You can hit me up at ryan at slackline.com and we will add it to this list and maybe I can break them all at the same time so I don't have to narrate in between all of them. Thank you everyone who sent me something to make this episode happen and thank you Tucker for collaborating with me on this. Your comments obviously steer the direction in which a video is made. I don't make paramotor content, but as you see, we have a paramotor video now. Let me know how I can make your next paramotor video for the aluminum fatigue the best I can. Cheers.